Friend, today is the day we are planting out 2024's garlic. Could not be more happy with it. Well, we're planting out two of the varieties. I have three more varieties in the mail, but they're not here yet and it's not a huge quantity. So I thought what I would do is get the majority of 2024's garlic in the ground because it is beautiful outside. And then in case you missed it, this is the black bean harvest. It was about nine pounds, six ounces. I think my scale is inside now, but I'm super thrilled with the black bean harvest. So I'm just gonna set this over here and we're gonna go ahead and prep the garlic for planting. I've already prepped the beds. When we go out there, I'll talk to you about what I did for the beds. But I have two varieties that I got from one. This is called Rock and Bowl. It's a hard neck variety, so it's gonna form scapes. And these cloves are huge. I got this from a local farmer. And then one of my friends, Lisa, she gave me three of her garlic heads. Now, one of them was supposed to be for eating, but I can't help it. I'm not, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself in breaking these into, to cook with. I wanna plant every single one of them. She lives about an hour south of me. And she said that she bought these from her local farmer many years ago, and they've done so well for her every year. They're also a hard neck variety. And you can just see, I mean, I, when I got these, I was so impressed with the size of the, the cloves. That is one clove, and this is not an elephant variety. This is, this is called Great Northern White Hard Neck Variety, and I could not be more thrilled to plant this. All the varieties of garlic this year I'm planting are all brand new to me, except for the elephant garlic. That is in the mail on my way here. I ordered that, and so that will be here probably in the next week or so, but it's been a week and a half of just torrential downpour. I mean, look at the size of this clove. That's huge. So it has been cold, cold, cold and rainy for the last week. And so today it's mid seventies. And so it's a perfect day to get out there and get my garlic planted. So that's two cloves. So when you're planting garlic, you do wanna keep the papers on, but you do wanna separate the cloves. So I just broke the paper off that a little bit. That's gonna be okay. I mean, I can't get over the size of these cloves. They're huge. And they have, this variety has a lot of cloves for being a hard neck variety. Usually hard neck varieties only have a few cloves. That's amazing. So that's, that's two heads. I'm gonna break the third head apart. And I did just damage this one with my fingernail. I really put a big gash into it. You can see that. That might be okay if I plant it, but it could cause molding. So I'm actually gonna take that one inside and I will enjoy that one. So I'm not gonna let that go to waste. And then this one's pretty small and so is this one. So what I'll probably do is take these smaller ones inside and I'm going to enjoy, we'll eat, with, we'll eat these ones. The other varieties of garlic I have, these are both hard neck varieties. The other two varieties that I have coming are soft neck varieties other than the elephant garlic. One of them is called Sicilian artichoke soft neck garlic. And the other one is, I'm gonna butcher this. I'm gonna put the name and the picture right here. And those are both soft neck varieties. So I will be able to braid those as long as they do well <laughs> next year. That's my goal is to be able to braid garlic next year. And I did see a video that you can remove the heart. So hard neck garlic, there's this hard stock. You don't buy hard neck garlic at the store because they don't store in long-term storage very well. They mold quicker than a soft neck variety. So if you buy garlic at the grocery store that's fresh, it's always soft neck. So you don't get this hard center. And that is the flowering stem of the plant. So from this hard neck, the flower comes from the garlic bulb. And look at the size of these bulbs too. These are huge. These are, I'm just showing my hand for like reference of how big these are. These are the size of small elephant, like really small elephant garlic heads. So I'm excited about these. So I'm gonna try, I mean, that is one clove of garlic. This is, I forgot the name of it already. I was gonna look it up for you. I bought this from a local farm at the farmer's market, someone I've been buying local produce from for a long time. I actually volunteered at their farm and helped them. So that one, 
that had four cloves. But those were huge cloves. You'd only need one of these cloves for dinner. This variety is called Rokum Bowl, and I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. And this, let me just show you how beautiful. These are night and day different from what I grew in my garden this last year. So that's the hard neck part. You can see why it gets its name. So this little one, I'm gonna eat. Some differences between hard neck and soft neck garlic varieties is hard neck varieties tend to have larger garlic cloves, but fewer cloves per head. They also tend to have a stronger, bolder garlic flavor, and they have a garlic scape, which is the flowering head. So you can harvest that and eat that. It tastes just like garlic. So you kind of get two harvests for the price of one. The problem with them, though, is they do not tend to store as long, but they are the ideal garlic variety for cool climates, zone six and below. And then soft neck varieties tend to have more garlic cloves per head. They store a whole lot longer, which is awesome. That's why their store bought typically is soft neck varieties. You do not get a garlic scape, and they tend to have a little bit more of a mild garlic flavor. I have 89 cloves of this garlic here. Oh, 89, 90, just found one. 91, I'm gonna write that down. 2024's garden, I am going to be good about labeling. I'm gonna mark on here that we have 91, 91, I'm gonna write the name. and the date. Now I'm gonna count my Great North White. And I have 20 of these, plus I have these ones that we're gonna enjoy inside to eat. I'm gonna bring this tape down with me because I'm going to put it in the landscape fabric and divide my garlic so that I know this pin is dying. Breaking out a new one. Let's see if this one works any better. Oh yeah, these are UV protective pins. You cannot use Sharpies and have them be outside or they will fade in the sun in no time. Rewrite this one darker. Much better. Just gonna put on here hard neck. And then out of the row Kimball, these are the ones that I'm not gonna plant and we'll be able to enjoy eating these. Now that we have the garlic separated, we can go out to the garden and get it planted. I'm gonna grab some gloves, a blowtorch, our tape, and the garlic. And this is the bed I'm gonna plant the garlic in this year. We've already prepped this bed and I'm gonna show you how my dad and I prepped it. Here's an overview of the garden and this is the bed right here that we're gonna be planting in. It's right in the middle of the garden at the very bottom row. And this garlic is gonna be here for nine-ish months. It'll be mid-July when I harvest it. And so I'm kind of glad that it's gonna be in the middle of the garden. And so there'll be nice symmetry when I go to plant other things. This here is about two weeks before my dad and I harvested the potatoes on this day, and then we amended the soil before we went inside to call it for the end of the day. And I'm really glad I did because as soon as I'm done harvesting a bed, I like the idea of amending it so that when I need a bed to plant in, I can just get planting and I don't have to amend the bed. So what my dad and I did on this day after we harvested the potatoes is we put two bags of compost down 
we put a bag of manure down, we mix that in with some soil amendments. And the goal is to kind of revitalize this soil, give the soil some nutrients so that the garlic can hopefully thrive and grow nice and big for me. Now, when I was separating the garlic, the reason I was talking about, you know, some of them, we're going to eat some of those cloves of garlic is because garlic, the clove that goes into the ground is directly related to how big the garlic head can grow to. And so the really tiny, tiny heads of garlic, I didn't want to plant because they're not going to grow very big. And so we're just going to eat those cloves and then I'll plant the largest cloves. So now we are back to present day and I need to remove the irrigation so that I can burn holes into the landscape fabric. And when my dad and I tightened down this landscape fabric, we didn't get it super taut. And so I will note that for future, that when I put the landscape fabric down, even if I don't plant in it right away, I wanna get the landscape fabric nice and taut so that it stays in place hopefully. And when the garlic grows this coming spring, the holes will be in the right place where the garlic clove is, cloves are in the ground. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm taking a minute to tighten up the landscape fabric so that when I burn holes and I plant the garlic cloves, that hopefully throughout this winter, the landscape fabric will stay in place and the garlic will be able to grow up right where I want it to grow up. So I am planting this garlic obviously in the fall. I have had the best luck growing garlic when planted in the fall. Gar garlic is one of the longest growing crops because it has to be planted in the fall so that it can stratify. I'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a minute. I was going to keep these flowers in here a little bit longer, but I thought let's go ahead and remove them and just start with a clean, fresh, empty bed. A little sad to see them go, but I think they served a good purpose in the garden and it's time to start and get ready for a new season. So I'm glad I took the time to tighten up this landscape fabric because I am going to be burning holes in it. I want to make sure it's snug where it's going to be. Bed is prepped. That took hardly any time because most of my effort was already done. Now I know for future that I want to make sure I tuck the fabric in nice and tight so that as soon as I want to plant, it's ready to go. But all the soil has already been dealt with and so we can get planting. The biggest thing I need to decide is how far apart I want to plant these garlic plants. I normally plant them about three to four inches apart, but these are huge and I want to give them enough space to grow into big heads of garlic, not just, I want the whole head to be big so I get a bunch of big heads. So I think I'm gonna give them a little bit more space this year. I am planting six garlic cloves per length of the bed. So I'm planting them about six inches apart or so, which is definitely more space than I've ever allowed for my garlic. My goal is to try to grow nice big heads of garlic. And one way I'm doing that is by giving them a little bit more space so they don't have to compete for nutrients as much. And another way I'm doing that is I amended the bed with the compost, manure, and soil amendments, which I have never done before. I've never before planting fertilized my bed, which I'm hoping helps them grow to be large, nice heads of garlic. So I'm going to start with my Great Northern Garlic first. I've got 20 garlic cloves and these cloves are going to turn into heads of garlic. The reason why you want to plant your garlic in the fall, if at all possible, is because garlic does this funny thing. You plant a clove of garlic and you want to make sure you plant it root side down. So the pointy side is going to go up and the root side is going to go into the ground. I have planted them upside down before and they will grow, but they grow really funny. And so you want to try to plant them correct in the correct orientation if possible but there's this funny thing that happens in the cold temperatures throughout the fall and winter the clove of garlic it's called stratification and something happens there's some 
hormone or something in the garlic that tells the garlic to split the garlic clove to split and so that when it starts growing in the spring it doesn't grow into one big garlic clove it grows into a garlic head and that is a beautiful thing now you can manipulate that if you you know aren't able to get your garlic into the ground in the fall so that it has those cold temperatures you can put your garlic cloves in the refrigerator in the spring for a few weeks and that can trick it into thinking that it went through a winter cycle and I've never done that before. I have just tried to plant my garlic cloves in the spring to grow into heads and it doesn't work. And I, I skipped the refrigerator portion and it was a complete fail. But MI Gardener I know has a bunch of videos on stratifying garlic in the refrigerator if you need to do that. So here I've got my Great Northern garlic planted and I'm taking this tape and I'm running a nice big white line down so that I know what is what i am committed friend to label 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 so that i have the information and you have the information and we can be more informed when we're harvesting what is what and it is so empowering when you know what varieties you're growing and where they are this is a stretch for my personality labeling is not something i enjoy doing but every time i label and i'm in the garden and i know what variety i'm working with when i'm harvesting i enjoy it so much more and so my goal is to do a better job at it so here i am now planting the amish rokum bowl variety and this is a variety that i purchased at the farmer's market from a farm so the garlic that I got from a friend and the garlic I bought from a farm is not certified seed garlic. The garlic that I ordered that's going to be in the mail, the soft neck variety and the elephant varieties are a certified seed garlic. And what that means is that it is guaranteed not to have fungus and virus. Garlic tends to be susceptible to those. And so if you want to guarantee yourself that you're not inoculating your soil with soil funguses and viruses, ordering seed garlic is the best way to go. Or if you want to try new varieties or specific varieties, you can order them and, you know, order specific varieties. But you can go to the grocery store, go to your farmer's market, ask a friend for garlic they grew, and you can plant that and it will grow. There's nothing special per se about seed garlic versus garlic you get at the grocery store, except for the fact that it's certified typically to be disease-free. And usually when they sell them, they will sell the larger heads of garlic so that you can grow a larger head of garlic. Because if you plant really small cloves of garlic from a small head of garlic, you're going to get really small heads of garlic. So that's why they usually will sell larger heads as seed garlic. Now, if you purchase garlic from a friend or from a local farm, they will typically be super honest with you if you ask them. One of my local farmers who I purchase tons of produce from, the one I purchase my onions for the year from, and I purchase my, I used to purchase all my tomatoes from him before I had my own garden. He grows a ton of garlic, tons of garlic. And he will sell me his garlic to eat, but he is very upfront and honest with me. And he says, do not plant my garlic in your garden. It's fine to eat, but it does have a, disease that you will inoculate your soil with. And so, you know, just talk to your farmers if you need to purchase your garlic at the farm, you know, farmer's market or from a friend. And, you know, if they're a good farmer, they'll be honest with you if it is okay to plant in your garden. And so I had um, this, this farm and I talked to them and they said it was good to go. So I feel comfortable planting this in my garden, even though it is not certified seed garlic. I'm really excited to see how well it does. I am planning in the spring, as soon as my garlic sprouts, I am gonna amend the bed again with some soil amendments and fertilizer, and I'm gonna give you know, these garlic cloves as much nutrients as they need, hopefully, to grow into nice big garlic heads of garlic so we can enjoy eating them all fall and winter. Okay, we got all the garlic planted for that I have in the house right now. So I have quite a bit of space in this garden bed left, more than I think I have garlic coming. So I got about half the bed planted and I will show you how much space I have left. 
I might see if I can run to the farmer's market or <clears throat> call a couple farmers that I know and see if they have any seed garlic to spare so that I can plant this whole gar this whole bed in garlic because that is what can get me through one year. So I'm gonna put my tape down to indicate that this is my, I can't remember the name, I'll put it right here. Oh, I've got it right here. This is why I'm labeling things, friend. I am gonna be so much better about it this next year. So far, we've already made a good start because I've had really good luck with the duct tape and putting it on the landscape fabric. That's worked really well. This is the Romcam, Rom Campbell hardneck variety. Stick this here. We got 90 something cloves. There's one clove here and I broke a clove. So I'm gonna bring those in. I'll wash them up obviously really well, but we'll end up eating those just because they're not going to be good for planting. So it feels really good to have this project done. Let me show you how much bed I have left. So I have almost half a bed left, a little less than half a bed. It's starting to cool down, which feels great. So I think I'm gonna go on and move on to my next project, which I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get to, but I think I wanna tackle it. Well, I know I want to tackle it, but I think I'm gonna get to it today. And I want to remove the Roma tomato plants in here. They are starting to show signs of disease and I'm kind of ready for tomato production to slow down a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and start pulling all these plants. There's 11 plants in this bed and they're still growing. It's putting on new fruit and new flowers, but I just, I need it to be done. <laughs> so there's green beans in here too. I'm gonna try to leave those in here, but we're going to harvest the red tomatoes and all the green tomatoes. And I'll let the green tomatoes ripen inside. There are definitely some that are gonna be rotten in here and some that are diseased, and those will go to the chickens. Like that one right there, that will go to the chickens. I have 10 Roma tomato plants in this bed and one slicing tomato. I'm not sure the variety of slicing tomato. Now this one particular Roma tomato plant is producing tomatoes that are about one third the size of the rest of them. And so I don't know if this was some sort of hybrid that somehow got in my seed packet or what <laughs> but it ended up or you know what this could be one of the cherry varieties i'm not sure but this bed probably produced i didn't weigh it i should have weighed it maybe next year that'll be a goal of mine but this year the abundance has come out of this garden it's all i could do to harvest it and preserve it or harvest it and donate it or harvest it and gift it so I didn't have the bandwidth to weigh, but I am pretty confident I've gotten about three or 400 pounds of tomatoes out of this one bed alone. It has blown me away how productive these Roma tomato plants have been. And this was a $2 seed packet I got from MI Gardener. It came with probably 25 seeds. I probably don't need to buy Roma tomato seeds next year because I have enough in the seed pack. I probably will, but <laughs> I'm just blown away by how productive these plants have been. So I do want to remove all the tomato vines from this cage and so I am going to snip that up so I can remove them. If you see green tomatoes or red tomatoes going into this bin that I'm not saving, it's because they have disease on them or they're cracked or they're punctured or something along those natures or they're not totally mature yet. For a tomato to ripen inside you want it fully grown to the proper size and then it'll start ripening from the inside out. This is a great looking green tomato. I don't see disease on it. I do see maybe where I was a little rough with it, but I think it's gonna be just fine versus if it's got any sort of weird markings, disease looking type things, it's just gonna go into the compost. Now I'm not gonna put this into my compost where I put my other compost because this does show signs of disease and you can Keep, you can perpetuate the disease if you compost this. So this is gonna go into the backwoods, just dumped into the backwoods and composted just in the backwoods. I do end up pulling a, almost everything out of this bed except for the celery. So this bed originally had Roma tomato plants, green beans, I put jade green beans around the Roma tomato plants along the other edge, the edge you can't see, you'll see it in a minute. There was celery, 
and then on each end I had flowers. So on one end I had chamomile flowers and on the other end I had petunias. And I was I was planning to try to remove these tomato plants and leave the green beans, but it just got too convoluted and so I just decided I'm going to remove everything. The petunias were done, the chamomile was done, and I wanted just to clean this up a little bit. I do leave the celery. You're going to see the celery in a minute and the celery looks beautiful and I've already harvested one big harvest off the celery. I came in and I just chopped the celery down at the base, but I left the root bulb and the heart of the celery in the ground. This, These here are the petunias and they're done. You can see they just kind of, I think it's been a little too cold and they've kind of, you know, lived their life out. And so I thought, let's go ahead and get these out, get this whole end of this bed cleaned up. But what I found to be easier too when removing these tomato plants is actually snip the plant at the base of it so that I can just pull the cage off and it made it a lot easier in the long run. And I was careful not to snip the irrigation or the landscape fabric when possible. But I left the root bulb going back to the celery in the ground and celery is really interesting. It will continue to grow. So if you've never grown it before, when you go to harvest it the first time, don't remove the plant once you've harvested a hard harvest off the top leave the celery in the ground you can see it right there on the left hand side that is all new growth and i've been harvesting celery probably once a week i just come now and i break a couple stalks off if i need a recipe that calls for celery or we want celery as a snack or something like that i just come and i harvest around the outside and it just continues to perpetuate itself it is kind of like a cut and come again crop that I did not realize until this year how much celery can be a cut and come again crop. Now, I don't know, let me look it up. This is fascinating. I did not know this until I just Googled it and it says that celery is semi cold hardy, which means that it can withstand light frost between 28 and 32 degrees. And celery is among a bunch of vegetables that can withstand light frost. And so along with celery, there's beets, carrots, parsnips, lettuce, chard, peas, Chinese cabbage, endive, radicchio, cauliflower, parsley, and celery are semi-cold, cold, cart, semi-cold hardy, if I can speak properly. And so that's really interesting. So I'm going to leave this celery in the ground. I'm going to keep an eye on my temperatures. Right now, my nighttime temperatures are mostly in the 50s. We're getting a couple nighttime temperatures in the 40s. We haven't gotten anywhere close to frost yet. And maybe I will keep some of the celery in the ground and just see how long it can stay in the garden. And I will harvest off it as long as possible. I do have some celery in the freezer preserved up so that come dead of winter, we can enjoy celery. Now I'm gonna go through and pick out the ones that are good. Some of these are rotten and no good, but some of them are beautiful. There are some really beautiful green tomatoes in here. I do pick out, don't worry, not all of those green tomatoes on that one plant are going to end up in the compost. I'm gonna go dump this in the woods. I'm going to, ah, just stepped on a tomato. Go bring some of these tomato cages to the shed while I'm up there. I'm not gonna be able to get them all in this first trip, but since I need to go out the gate, I might as well grab what I can. And instead of having them live in the garden all winter, like I've done in the past, I'm going to try my best at getting them put away where they go right from the get-go. That's about as many as I can get. I've got about five there. Stick that on. Go like that. There we go. All right. Go put it away. I just dumped all the tomato greens in the compost and then I just took the green tomatoes and red tomatoes and dumped those for the chickens. They were already going to bed 
and then they, a bunch of them hopped out and wanted to see what I had to drop off for them. On my way back over here, I found some cayenne peppers, some green chilies. My cayenne pepper plants aren't looking so super great. We've had a couple 40 degree nights and I don't think they're very happy with that. I also grabbed some really small carrots because I purposely grabbed small ones. My parents, like I said, are coming over tomorrow to harvest the onions and carrots. And I wanna make sure I know which variety is which, and I do. These are, now I can't remember the name. <laughs> I'll put the name right here. They are a, they're one I got at MI Gardener. But my carrots are looking, this is not a good representation of what my carrots look like. The Bolero carrots, the ones, those ones are this big, they're huge. So now I'm going to grab my green tomatoes and red tomatoes, the non-diseased ones. And I'm gonna go grab my tomato cages and the stuff I brought out here from the garlic. I have not been perfect at it, but I have been collecting and putting stuff away when I use it after I'm done using it. So it's been a big win for me when it comes to that. Normally, not normally, but sometimes I tend to leave things in the garden. Try not to do that this year. I also can see that my cilantro seeds need to be harvested tomorrow or they will all fall off the plants and they will end up on the walkways and I don't want that. Oh, I didn't even show you what the bed looks like, the after. Let me show you how nice it looks. I wanna get all these into my wheelbarrow first. Here's the green bean harvest. So not very much. I'll obviously wash these really, really well before we eat them tonight because they've been in literal dirt. But that's the nature of real food is it comes dirty sometimes. But here's what the bed looks like. I think it looks fantastic. I'm gonna be able to reuse this landscape fabric. I'm obviously tonight not going to amend the soil or put more compost or anything like that. But it certainly looks a whole lot better. The celery looks great. This is a second round on the same plants of celery. And I've got a couple more over there. I don't know why these middle celery plants decided to die on me, but the two end ones have looked really good. I've been able to harvest celery fresh. Anytime I need celery, I come out here. I did one big first harvest. I cut all of them down to the ground. And then since then, I haven't touched the stuff I put in the freezer. I've just been coming out here and grabbing fresh celery. I'm gonna grab all the things I brought down here. This garlic and this garlic we will eat. We got one full basket of green tomatoes and one full basket of red tomatoes. We probably got, I did not weigh it, I should have. I just, this time of year is so busy that adding, weighing all the tomatoes or all the produce that comes out just seems overwhelming, but maybe I'll try to make that a goal for next year. I've done better about labeling, not perfect, but better. So maybe if I attempt to make that a goal, I could weigh, but I think I've probably gotten two or 300 pounds of tomatoes out of this one bed. To say that feels just as much of an accomplishment as growing the tomatoes is putting the tomato cages away and now I am going to put the, the tomatoes inside and I'm gonna lay the green ones out on a table and let them ripen and as they ripen I will manage them the wheelbarrow I'm gonna leave up here because we are going to pick up right where I left off and my parents and I are gonna be out in the garden harvesting tomorrow. It's gonna to be a great day, I'm so excited. I'm gonna Google some green tomato recipes. I've got some big slicing round green tomatoes still left. I have never made fried green tomatoes. I know that Roma's probably wouldn't make good fried green tomatoes, but I, I still wanna try that this year. 
And then I'm gonna keep the wheelbarrow out because we are gonna pick this up right where we left off. My parents are gonna be here tomorrow and we're gonna be harvesting carrots and onions. And onions, I love growing onions because I love eating onions. It's a staple in our house. We go through a ton of onions. And even though the onions didn't do, well, I've got some mixed feelings about the onions. There's some massive onions out there, and then there's some small ones, but the carrots are gonna be fantastic. But I'm so excited to harvest the onions because whatever we get, I absolutely know we will eat every single one of them, and that's always a huge win in my book. So thank you for being here as we planted out the garlic. I will be planting out three more varieties, but I don't know, I'll just do that as soon as the garlic comes in the mail. And then if that's not enough, I'll run to the farmer's market or call some farmers I know locally and see if I can pick up some more garlic so that I can get that entire bed planted out in garlic. I think that's it. I think that's it for tonight. I am so grateful for a crock pot, crock pot meal. I'm gonna head inside and enjoy creamy garlic pork chops with roast potatoes in the crock pot. It's gonna be so good. Thank you for being here, friend. If you wanna watch some of my other videos, I can pop them there. You can go into it between, between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.